Hi guys, and I've got for you the Genesis. This is the G80 2.5 all-wheel drive, about 300 horsepower. It's kind of like a super luxury saloon, sporty thing, obviously. We're going to give it a go now. Genesis have done amazing things in the last few years. They've gone leaps and bounds, you know, from what they used to be, which was like, let's be honest, Lexus wannabes, to now pretty much setting their own standards and their own templates, especially with the new electric car, which you can see inside a video, which is also on my channel. But looking at this car now, completely new design, completely new look. The way it stands out, it's got a real bold face about it and a real sort of stance, you know, the thing looks substantial, which is what you really want from a luxury car, right? So let's have a quick look at the car and we'll take a look inside as well and then we'll take it for a drive and see what it's like. Yeah, that huge bowl grill just beneath that uh, winged emblem. But I've been familiar with Genesis for a while and even its predecessors, the Honda Equus and stuff like that. But look how these lights actually match up with the uh, with the stripes at the back there, with the sort of um, the sort of what are they say air intake kind of thing. But they're not air intakes at all. But they're just kind of slashes along the side to character lines, if you like, really. But uh, quite a big, big car. Um, and you can certainly feel that in the way it looks. Beautifully finished, nice metallic paint on this one. It's actually, I think this is a hatchback. We're gonna find that out in a moment, actually. But four-wheel drive, 2.5, a real stance, a real presence at the back. There's the key. So to open the boot is press and hold. And there we go. So it is actually a saloon. It's not a hatchback, so it's interesting. So that's a discovery to me as well. The boot is, there's a low lip, so not too bad. A little bit of a thing to get it over, but actually quite spacious inside. The seats are fixed, so it's not split folding, but you do get a ski slot sort of arrangement back there. You've got pockets on each side, and you have a, an underfloor compartment as well for bits and pieces and stuff like that. So let's try the rear compartment. We, we don't have to put any effort into closing it, of course, because it does that by itself. So here we go, we are now, oh, let's adjust the camera. We are now inside this thing, and oh, soft closing doors, there you go. Um, and as you'd expect, it's all luxury. Loads of room in here. Um, maybe I could have done with a little bit more uh, knee room, but actually it's fine for me. I'm guessing that seat is quite far back. Uh, there's a little bit of an ingress here, just where the shins are, but feet room is okay as well, not too bad. But over here, you got this big center console. I like the finishing on here, that's really, really nice as well sort of marbleish effect sort of thing. I like these controls. This is very much um, a bit more like the Mercedes sort of effect thing going on here now. Um, switches there. This is full like heated seats, cool seats, you know, power adjustable. You've got menus for this and all the rest of it. So lots and lots of stuff going on. Huge center console, lots of space. So there you go. I've actually had somebody just sit in the car and was six foot tall and just move the car back. So now I know that that seat is, and actually then the seat then did move back as he got out of the car because it does that thing. And it was still plenty of space. So it's actually quite comfortable back there. You've got screens for individuals here. There's a, there's a big old sunroof as well. Can you, I don't know if you can make that out. There you go. There's a sunroof that comes up to about here but other than that really comfortable i mean i can recline back in these seats this is this is actually a really comfortable place to ride and of course sh sun shades and all the rest of it as well right time to take it for a little drive on this event that we're on just have a look at this interior though first of all look how that's done i mean long gone are the days when you used to get into something like a hyundai uh, top of the range car and you used to feel like it was trying to emulate uh, what a Lexus would look like from photographs, you know, um, that's that that was the sort of thing that they and I'm going back like, you know Nearly 10 years, but now look at it. Look how look at the way the screen is. It's just beautifully finished and these buttons along here um, I love these rotary dials. I don't know what any of this does, but look at this magnificent, you know uh, Transmission knob. It's got a, look it's it's actually I think that's 3d or it's actually it's I think it actually is sculptured like that so it does go in, I think this is a crystal top on the car. That must be your iDrive system, massive screen there. So I'm guessing this, no, it's a touch screen as well. So that is a touch screen and it, oh, blimey, look at that. Look at all of this stuff that you've got on here. And this is really nice. The way that came on was actually really good. A power adjustable steering. So let's say get that into position. But I think there's got cameras and stuff in there as well because a little compartment there, which I'm guessing that's where it's sort of monitoring me from. Um, but yeah, all kinds of buttons there. Very nice finishing that's carried through this car. Um, I love the way this is done. So really, very, very opulent and nicely done. Cool. Let's take this 
for a little bit of a drive then if i can figure out how in a, if i can figure out how it actually works so there you go drive i'm in drive mode now wing mirrors are okay and uh let's let's move out i like this steering is very interesting design um it's sort of there's the you can see the big wing logo in the middle but this is central boss but then it has a lower rib to it kind of thing which sort of gives it a kind of four spoke but very much a, a horizontal plane about it intriguing and interesting which is kind of what you want from modern cars isn't it because you do want a bit of character you want a few interesting design touches and stuff like that but this is something that i have to say you know between uh hyundai and kia they are both now doing extremely well i mean they both really got a, a grip and an understanding of the, the the lure of an aesthetic appeal of how to get people interested in the car just from the look of it just from the styling of it just from the features that the car has and this is what they're now doing i think extremely well on, on these cars right the way through from the lower end of the kia models and right up to this genesis model with uh, Hyundai's luxury arm so again it's interesting because i've just driven two electric cars uh, on this same surface and both times the first thing I've commented when we've come across those bumps is that uh, How rigid the car felt now, this car is just going over the same bumps I felt them I've detected them and you know the car has moved, but there's been a little bit. There's a suppleness to it There's a dampness. There's a way there's a way that it damps that 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 sort of the harshness is not there and that you slightly get in electric cars and, and again, I think that being down to the fact that you know the platforms are really rigid in that car now i'm not going to play too much with the drive modes um on these because again this is a very uh short drives that we have um during this event so we don't get a chance to spend too much time with the car so i'm just going to drive it as it is but you know so far so good it seems to be uh, spot on really a little bit of a traffic jam ahead now just as i'm sitting here in this traffic jam uh, i have a chance to actually look at the dials and again there's something very unique. I don't think these are, are they, if these are digital, I'll need to find out from somebody. But if those are digital, that is bonkers because they look 3D. I, I, and it's like a floating digital. Oh, how can I control this? Yes, the middle bit. I think the middle bit is digital. And then the dials themselves, I feel are analog embedded into the dash. So there's like a 3D feel to them. Um, and these unique, kind of very classical colors. It's got the, the needles themselves are brown. The needles are designed in a very classical uh, way. Um, I am in two minds about whether or not those are actually digital or whether they're analog, but they have the, they have the look uh, and, and, and sense of uh, analog. How utterly extraordinary. I actually do really like that dashboard. I mean, I could spend hours just looking at the dash, at the instrument panel. Oh, uh, and it does that indicator thing where whichever way you indicate, a little camera comes up in that direction showing you what's on that side. Right then, so we're into the hill section here at uh, Millbrook where we are doing these uh, series of drives and um, large car and you feel it. So, you know, you, this is a small road um, for this uh, largish car. But having said that, you know, the ride itself is very smooth. It's coping so much better with this. The body control is uh, superb as you would expect it to be. Um, this is of course the first petrol car today that I've driven around here because I've driven two electric cars around here so far. Um, and again, you can nice. So yeah, I mean, you can tighten the line on the car. It's very good. The ride is uh, response. The steering is responsive. Not an issue at all. This is not a car that uh, really you want to be hurling around too much because it is a big hefty thing. There's no question about it. Um, but you've got a very tight corner there and it's okay. It's not too bad. Um, it's not like, for example, we tried the EQS earlier here and it was more nimble as, as befits the fact that it had that incredible you know, all-wheel steer system. But this one picks up speed very, very quickly. It's very quiet. I mean, it could almost be an electric car because of how quiet it is. Um, but it is, of course, a petrol car. All-wheel drive. Now it's beginning to get upset a little bit with that surface. But then the surfaces here are actually quite rough um, in parts. And I guess that's because of the nature of this facility where they do a lot of testing. 
um, alarms going off I don't know if that's to do maybe proximity to the car in front perhaps that's what that was or lane keep assist perhaps you know um, the, the steering isn't fighting me on the lane so that's good I always uh, I always get annoyed when cars tend to do that grips quite well maybe the slightest suggestion of uh, understeer there um, I'm not doing paddle shifts or anything like that so just trying the car out as it is and it's just this is not really the environment for this car let's be honest I mean this car is about you know cruising around in and probably cruising in the back of you know that's really what this is about but the fact that it is 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive you know does at least suggest that there's some uh, sportiness to it or some sporty intent to it so it's interesting to find that you know how it feels on a, on a road like this which is to say that it actually is doing quite well again not a lot of fuel through the steering the steering is uh, I wish that it could do with a little bit more heft again I'm not exploring the drive mode so there may be a mode that does that uh, I'm just driving it as it is but so far so good um, fairly accurate not difficult to place although you do feel the width of the car you do you, you can sense that yeah this is this is not a small car um, and that becomes apparent quite quickly so but on the other hand it's kind of what you want you want a little bit of you know size and bulk and heft um, from a vehicle like this to know that you know you're in something that uh, has a presence about it um, and has an elegance about it you know which is which is what this car has I gotta say I think that you know considering the price of these things um, compared to the sort of prices that you'd be paying for cars that are in this sort of league with this sort of spec luxury quality and equipment levels um, I think that you are definitely getting something that punches above its weight that's for sure um, so yeah very very nice I think um, a real again now comparing it back or thinking back to Genesis cars that I've driven in the past or even like I said luxury Hyundai cars I've driven in the past they've always been good they haven't been great and I think we're now getting to the point where these cars are now um, focusing on that focusing on greatness they're sort of going right we're, we're, it's enough we're enough of being the copycats we're enough of being the understudies we now want to be the main cars we now want to be the main things that are the people aspire to own and I think you know what we're really getting there with this that's for sure so yeah well done Genesis can't wait to uh, experience some more of your cars and see what you're doing and come along on this journey with you especially with the new electric car that will be very interesting let me know what you think of the new Genesis model and the new Genesis range and what Genesis is now doing with their cars in the comments below a big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at Air Technic who are top tier sponsors of Brown Car Guy. Check them out at Air Technic Co UK for exhausts, brakes, suspension and body kits. Plus our other major sponsor, Nayajan Solutions. Much appreciation also to tier 4 sponsors, Muhammad Ali Humaid, Tom Conway Gordon and Reza Adil. And of course all these other guys who supporting on Patreon. Brown Car Guy is eternally grateful. Hey, think about joining them over at Patreon.com Brown Car Guy. If you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and website. Plus follow on social media by searching for Brown Car Guy.